Hi there, I'm Steve Angel. Um, I put a question out on my group page, Yin and Yang Physical Culture, and whether people would find it interesting if I um, put some words into a demonstration on mill swinging rather than just posting videos of myself swinging them. I got a pretty good response from that, so I thought I'd put something together to show you a few cues to make the swinging more smoother if you like. There's a lot of videos popping up now and um, I'm seeing sort of really excessive head and body movements and um, I just thought I'd put something together to try and show you how you can make this a bit smoother for yourselves. Um, I've got a little post-it note down here that I've made a few bullet points on of bits and pieces that um, are kind of the in thing of people debating. Now, you know, the first one I've put down is the supposed sacred knob on the end of the meal, whether, um, you know, the, you should have this really thin button on the end or... Um, in this uh, this pinky grip and um, I de I've dedicated the last six years to meal swinging I'm I'm not going to get myself to Iran anytime soon because uh, I'm a father of two kids and my life is dedicated to them you know I'm not in a position to travel the next best thing for me was to um, go onto YouTube, get past most of the rubbish that's been put out there and actually find the real stuff from from the um, Zurkhanas uh, in, in, in Iran. So, um, I mean, <clears throat> personally I don't use a pinky grip and um, it's, it is tradition, it is part of the tradition you know, from what I gather, so I'm not going to say don't do it or, or do it, whatever feels comfortable for you, I mean, look at this amazing, this absolutely unbelievable, look at this, the, for me to have received these meals from Ahmed Asfari is, is even now, it, it just blows me away to think that I'm holding this this in front of you now, you know. But this is Mike Simpson's replica meal. This, I mean, the, the greatest artisan in ever, as far as I'm concerned. And and there's no difference. There's absolutely no difference between, between those. Um, as I say, if, if it is something you really want to do and you think you're keeping the tradition alive by using a pinky grip. Who am I, who am I to, um, to say it's right or wrong? I'm just a guy who swings these things in his back garden. These, these are approaching 30 inches long, most of these. So the talk I've heard about this extra torque or this extra length it gives you, I don't think half an inch is, is making the massive difference in the world of mill swinging. So, hopefully that's covered off that. Mill swinging, mill swinging to me is meditation in movement. It isn't, it isn't strength. If you add strength into swinging mills, you're not you're not getting what it, what it's all about as if as far as I can see. When I watch these guys in Iran using mills, they're not exerting any tension. They're not. Their thought pattern isn't. Oh, I've got to keep the core tight. I've got to, you know, I've got to, you know, get. I'm getting strong and I'm doing this. It's meditation and movement to these guys. It's absolutely amazing in the difference between what I've seen these guys doing and what I'm reading, you know, is, and unfortunately it's the people in the West who are, the Western world who are putting these, this stuff out there about, you know, you're a warrior, if you're 
doing this super thing and your strength training and you're this or you're that. These guys, I don't believe these guys are thinking that. These guys are doing this because it's pure and simply for health and well-being. And why put something into something like meal swinging that's unnecessary of thinking it's strength training or thinking, God, goodness me, thinking you're a warrior or this stuff, you know. There's only one warrior in the world of all swinging out there and that's Mark, Marcus from The Quiet Power. And that's nothing to do with his swinging, although he's excellent at it. That's to do with his job he had for years, not knowing whether he was going to come back every night. He's going to be blown up in the army. That's a warrior. Swinging meals doesn't make you a warrior, but listen, I'm waffling, so I'm going to do a quick demonstration on, on these and then hopefully help you with some um, pointers to help it become smooth for you as well. So the hands are low. Okay, so let me just look at some of uh, some of these bits. Body and head movement, swinging, swinging meals, and the fact that everything I seem to see out there is it's coming around the head, and there's this turn. First, firstly, the head turns, and then the body turns, and then this thing's coming round, and and then you're doing it the other side. I tried practicing it before I set the video up and to be honest with you, I can't, I can't even really replicate that anymore. So, the biggest thing I've found is that the meal is being lifted too high with the swing. It should be started off in a low body position and it isn't the meal that lifts up unless you're doing double time swings. It's actually the elbow that you should be thinking of raising. The elbow, by coming up here, the mill shouldn't really be coming too far above your head. The other thing you'll notice here is when I'm swinging, I've got a mirror directly in front of me. I think that's absolutely key. It's instant feedback of what you're doing, whether it's a reflection in a mirror or it's a reflection in a window when I'm when you see the picture the videos of me swinging on my patio a lot of the time I'm looking at my reflection because it's instant feedback it's it's basically your instant video camera and I can correct myself as I'm going I can see if I'm adding tension to the movement because tension is the absolute last thing you need the looser you are with this you're not gripping the life out of it whether it's with a pinky grip or with uh, this uh, again supposedly hammer grip or whatever whatever the latest buzzword is for literally just holding on to the thing it's for me it's about staying loose and lifting the elbow you lift the elbow the elbow comes up the mill doesn't lift the mill drops by lifting the elbow the mill drops you don't have to you don't have to be moving your head out of the way because you're scared you're going to hit yourself on the head and believe me, I've hit myself on the head more, probably more than anybody over the last six years. You don't, need to, you don't need the excessive body movement and you don't need the excessive head movement if you're dropping the meal behind you. And again, a lot of this will come down to your mobility. My mobility has improved no end since I've been swinging these things. And it isn't, it isn't the tricep, it, it, you know, it's, 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 it's more to do with the lats and, and all around, you know, all around. And it's allowing that looseness to, over a period of time, happen. If you're pulling down too quickly and you're trying to get your hand behind your head too quickly, you are going to place pressure on your elbows. So, you know, one of the, one, probably one of the best things you can do at this moment in time, as relaxed as you can, hold the meal behind you, and whether it's here, whether it's here, 
that's that's your natural that's the natural movement that you're going to get at the moment believe me it will it will improve i'm i'm probably 17 and a half stone as i'm talking to you 250 pounds if you're you know if you're in america you know I've, you know this uh, I've been a power lifter, a weight lifter, a strong man, I've done all of this stuff. You know, apparently according to the world of functional training, I shouldn't be able to do all of this. I shouldn't be mobile. You know, I do 99% of my overhead pressing on a plate-loaded machine, so I'm the most unfunctional person in the world probably. But I, st I think I'm swinging these things smoother than... than you know anyone outside of Iran as well? That's not that's not blowing smoke up my ass. That's six years of of absolutely falling in love with this. So let's look at this elbow. Look at look at how I'm not lifting this thing up. I'm lifting my elbow. I'm starting from a low position. The elbow comes up. I don't need to move my head. I don't need to move my I don't need to move my feet. I don't need to be facing this way. It's all coming from my waist. Now this isn't core, don't start thinking, tighten the core, do this. Thousands of years ago, these amazing people who, who created this, the last thing they were thinking about is their core stability and they've got to pull this in or whatever. You know, they, they were warriors because they were having to go out and fight every day. We're swinging, we're, you know, we're swinging this and then posting pictures on Facebook of how great you are and what a warrior you are and then you're probably nipping off for your latte or something afterwards but you know loose no strength my grips loose in fact when I swing a, a meal sometimes I even let go of the grip at the back because you don't need to squeeze the life out of these whether it's like this or like, or like this it's the elbow lift the elbow up the meal didn't hardly come above my head didn't come above my head didn't come above my head. It's dropping, it's dropping behind me. The elbow's coming up. The meal isn't coming up, the meal is dropping. It's sitting in. And you know what, look, it's touching, it's touching. You know, this or this, whether it's right or wrong, again is another, another subject that everyone, everyone's an expert on, everyone's an opinion on. There's two things through me watching, there's probably not a video I haven't watched of the guys in Iran swinging these and 90 plus percent of them are holding it like this. They're not pinky gripping it. I, don't, I can't give you an answer on why some are saying this and then doing this. The other thing is, a massive, massive majority of them, again, 80 plus percent of them, are holding these mills on their chest. Okay, whether it's out here or it's in, personally, I think the tighter the swing, the better. It's in, it's brushing my chest, I can turn, lovely, bang, over here, over here, I'm turning. You can't see it very well because obviously um, I'm, I haven't got the best camera equipment in the world. I'm working off of a tiny little flip camera. But watch my videos of me outside. My waist is naturally soft and moving. I'm, I'm naturally moving from side to side. There is no tension in this whatsoever. It is a lovely, controlled... For me, a peaceful movement. It's meditation in movement. Here. One. Two. Here. The meal doesn't have to lift high. The elbow lifts high. And by lifting the elbow, it allows the meal to drop. The hand goes behind the neck. Everything's loose. My grip is loose. And I am using the least amount of strength that I need to use to make this the smoothest, efficient movement possible. And you're probably going, yeah, you're swinging four kilo meals, you know. 
let me just get the perfect Persian meals, the most amazing, the most amazing thing I've ever seen in physical culture in my life. These are seven kilos, okay? Again, low. There's nothing there. There's no strength there. I'm relaxed. It's coming over. Okay, my grip's relaxed. I even, like, allow my fingers to kind of let go of the mill slightly when it comes behind me. There's no, there's no tension in this whatsoever. I'm not contracting my core. I'm not doing any of this stuff. When you're in sync with your body, when you bring yin and yang to your body, what needs to tighten and what needs to loosen will do it automatically. You do not need to force it. Okay, let's have a look at some of the bits on here. So we're looking at meal, the weight of the meal. What's the optimum weight for a meal? The main thing you should be looking at in swinging meals is the health benefits it's giving you, okay? Swinging meals isn't a 300 kilogram deadlift. If you, if you need to have an ego boost and think you're a strength trainer, then you probably need to stop watching this and you need to probably go and join Louis Simmons' group and actually learn some strength exercises, you know, become do some heavy deadlifts and things like this. The weight of the meal, it really isn't that important. These are two and a half kilos each. They're CJ2 clubs. I only literally got these two days ago from Mike Simpson. And again, you don't need, it's the movement. It isn't the weight of the meal. The movement is what you're, you're doing this for health. You're doing this to help you lead and live a healthy life. So whether it's two and a half kilos, whether it's seven kilos, you know, whether it's the 21 kilo meals I've got in the, my garage or my new 12 kilo meals, it should, it should all feel the same. If it doesn't feel the same, then they're too heavy for you. Use the lighter ones. Work on your technique and get it going. The greatest Russian hammer thrower of all time, Yuri Sedik. I grew up, my first sport was a hammer thrower. Yuri Sedik was the hammer throwing god to me. And the one thing he said is that the setup of his throw and the whole of the turns, three turns for Yuri Sedik, whether he was throwing a light four kilogram hammer, or a 10 kilogram hammer, his technique had to be the same every single time. If you're having to kill yourself to turn a meal, it's too heavy for you. It really is too heavy for you. So if it's two and a half kilos, seven kilos, these are five kilos. I actually use these more than anything because five kilos, they feel great, you know? And I mean, look at this massive, knob on the bottom of, of these meals, you know, this supposed to be the worst thing in the whole wide world, you know, got to have this thin knob, does this look like it's the worst thing in the whole wide world, it isn't the shape, it isn't, it isn't whether this has been made out of three pieces of wood and it should be made out of one piece of wood, it's what you're getting from swinging it that counts, and this is what you should be getting, smooth, Rhythmic meditation in movement swinging. Okay, reps. I've just put a little note there reps. What's the optimum reps? And people are saying, oh, you've got to be doing it for two minutes, you've got to be doing it for 10 minutes, you've got to be doing it for this, you've got to be doing it for that. The one thing that helped me more than anything when I was struggling to progress with these was trying to do too many reps. So I will say, what are the optimum reps you should be doing? The optimum reps you should be doing are the perfect reps, are the good reps. 
as soon as it isn't good, put them down, have a break, go back again. If that's five reps, great. If it's a hundred reps, great. But as soon as, as soon as you've lost control of that, you're teaching yourself bad technique. And this is what you should be looking for. Starts going off and you've, you've lost this thing and you're wobbling around and this thing's going up here. You're not, you're not gaining anything out of it. You're only going to gain from the perfect reps. So keep your reps low to start with. Just do five each side or whatever it, whatever it is to get you going. Put them down. Have a rest. Think about it. Look at the videos. You know, and... Just keep, just keep everything as smooth and as perfect as, as can be. I think I've pretty much covered anything. If anybody, if anybody wants to ask me questions, then the best place is Facebook. Um, my personal Facebook page isn't the place to come. That's just full of pictures of my kids and things like that. I have a little group called Yin and Yang Physical Culture. I post training stuff on there. If you want to look that up, great. You know, just don't tell me you lift heavy shit when it isn't and things like that because um, I get into deflating egos, unfortunately, then. Um, I'm going to finish with thanking two, two people that who, who are the two who have who've made this the most amazing thing for me. Mike Simpson, for me, the best club maker in the world. Many apologies for that. I run out of memory on the um, on my camera, and uh, the battery is running out as well. I'm going to be really quick. As I said, thank you, Mike Simpson. Amazing clubs. Everybody should own them. And the last person I want to thank is Ahmed Aspari. I, I really hope I've pronounced that right. If I haven't, I, I really apologise for that, Ahmed, because you've given me the best the best gift I've ever received ever. I've been inducted into weightlifting hall of fames and strength hall of fames, but your kindness in giving me these means more to me than all of my lifting and, and all of that stuff put together. I, I can't repay you with anything other than words because these are priceless to me. They're the most amazing thing ever. Thank you very much for that. And thank you to your friends on your Facebook page who now call me Palavan Steve and have made me an honorary Palavan. I'm very humbled by that. I'm more than humbled by your kindness on these. And hopefully everybody out there will do them justice. And, uh, you know, if this video has helped you all, then great. Thanks a lot. Cheers.